Hello, my name is Pedro Torres. Uh, today I will be talking about Trichinella spiralis and how it affects humans and other animals too. I will also talk about the ways this type of parasite can cause trichinosis, which is a horrible disease. I will list the specific symptoms, uh, ways to prevent it, and uh, some treatments that can be taken uh, in order to get this parasite out of the body. What is Trichinella spiralis? Trichinella spiralis is the smallest parasite found in humans and is the most widespread all over the world. The male measures about 1.4 millimeters to 1.6 millimeters in length while the female is twice the size of the male. As we can see in the right corner, we got a female parasite in a male, which is a lot shorter in length. The female contains the uterus, which is filled with developing eggs, while the anterior here, part of the female contains the hatching juveniles. Uh, parasite, these parasites also contain a cuticle layer, which consists of many layers, three or four layers made of collagen. This cuticle layer protects the parasites when they invade the digestive tracts of animals or humans. Now, how does this parasite cause trichinosis? Well, they infect and damage the tissues inside of the human body or the animals too. It is mostly caused by eating uncooked pork or meats because when pigs are fed uncooked meat scraps or garbage, they can cause these trichinella larvae to be ingested into the human body. They later mature into adult worms in the intestinal tract. The adult worm will then travel through the various tissues, including the muscle, but will later create a cyst, which will be harder to remove from the body. The life cycle. The life cycle of the trichinella spiralis begins after ingestion of the first stage juvenile from the intermediate host. The parasite molts four times within the first 30 hours to mate. As we can see, uh, the pig is eating infected meat and has the parasite in it, which will produce the larvae. But how is the larvae produced? Uh, well, it requires the re reproduction process. The female produces pheromone and attracts the males. This is when the male will coil around the female with the curved area onto the genital pore of the male, female. The female is oviviparous, uh, which means she doesn't lay the eggs, but until they have already hatched in the uterus, inside the uterus. And they, the larvae are produced and sent into the small intestine. After the five or six days of infection, the larvae uh, become mature in adults in the small intestine. This is when they can be released through the exit hole of the gut wall. And they go into the blood through the hepatic portal vein or the lymphatic system. Then they are transported all over the body. And they in, when they come in contact with the muscle cells, they form a cyst inside the muscle. Let's go to the second 
diagram. Uh, we got a capsule around the cyst that prevents it, protects it uh, from being destroyed uh, until so it can no longer migrate. But when the when let's say the pig is killed by either a human or a human or a bear, they can cr cross infect the cycle and and, let, and continue the life cycle. But first, they must be eaten, ingested. Let's say uh, the human eats the uncooked pork. The human will continue the life cycle of this parasite because the digestive juices break down the, this capsule. This is when the worm can come out. And this is when they will form trichinosis, the horrible disease that causes many infections, symptoms, uh, which I'll we'll explain in a second. These symptoms of trichinosis. Uh, they are divided in the first stage and second stage symptoms. Uh, the first symptoms are mostly gastrointestinal, which usually occur after one or two days after the person that ingested or consumed the uncooked meat from the trichinella infected animal. Uh, this is when the larvae penetrate in the wall of the small intestine. This is when they mature and become adults and mate. At this stage, uh, some of the symptoms may be nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or abdominal pain. And now, uh, after a week or two, the infection, after infection, the adult female produces larvae that go into the intestine wall and enter the bloodstream. They will eventually hide in the muscle of the tissue, which will cause tissue invasion. As we can see in the second stage of uh, symptoms, we got some severe uh, symptoms, as we can see, muscle pain, weakness or fatigue, chilling of the swell, swelling of the face, mainly around the eyes, as we can see in the right corner. Got a patient with swelling of the face, uh, mainly around the eyes. As we can see in the lower picture, uh, we got a patient with a trichinella spiralis showing on it, its foot. Now I will talk about the treatments and preventions used to avoid trichinella spiralis and trichinosis. Some of the common treatments are albendazole, which is an antiseptic drug that eliminates the adult parasites. It can, albendazole is usually taken by mouth and uh, eliminates the adult worms in the intestine. However, uh, it does little effect on the cyst in the muscle. The next treatment that is used is corticoid steroids, uh, which are for severe uh, infection. Uh, it reduces the inf inflammation where infection is too severe. Another type is analgesics, uh, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug that just uh, helps relieve the pain. The preventions. Uh, some ways to do to avoid uh, trichinellus spiralis is to avoid undercooked wild game. Uh, all meats such as pork and beef should be cooked at 160 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, you should wait a few minutes before uh, you eat the meat after it's cooked. Using a thermometer is a good way to check to see if the meat is cooked early and should always be used. Uh, don't rely on wild game uh, to be frozen or reagitated. Uh, freezing it, uh, it's not going to work, it's not going to kill the larvae, so just don't like that. Also, don't cook your pork or meats in the microwave. 
or because uh, it doesn't really cook the meat thoroughly. Also, salt in it, mm, not a good process in meat technique. Also, always clean the meat grinds after every use, because you don't know what could be left over after using it. And most importantly, always wash your hands with water and soap. This will greatly help eliminate trichomalis spiralis.